Today we are going to talk about the time domain. Now that we are in alternating current, which I argue is the same thing as direct current, except that it keeps changing as time goes by, we have to understand how we measure those changes as time goes by, and that is what the time domain is all about. How we measure changes over time. Let's take a look at an example. I'm going to make a graph of time versus distance. So time, let's make that hours. So time is going to pass in hours, let's say one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours. And over here we're going to have a distance, let's make that kilometers, one, two, three, four kilometers. Now I'm going to go get in my car and sit there. And so as time goes by, how am I going to go on this graph? Well, I'm going to start right here at point zero because that's just like measuring voltage. We have to start somewhere, so we'll start where we are now. And so that's going to be my zero point. And I'm going to start not moving. I'm just going to sit in my car. Am I going to move? A kilometer at any time whatsoever? No, I'm not going to move. I'm not going to move this way at all. But how about through time? Well, I can't stop time. So time is going to pass whether I move or not. So after an hour, I'm going to be here in time. But in space, I'm in the same place. So I've not gone anywhere in, uh, in distance. And after two hours, I'm going to be here. And after three hours, I'm going to be here. So I'm just going to make a flat line along this bottom if I don't actually make some movement. So now let's see what happens if I start the engine and start driving. Let's assume I'm on a nice straight road and I can just get in there and just start going and I'm going to instantly start going at a speed. Well, let's find out what speed. I'm going to start going and I'm going to watch my odometer and after one hour, I find, so here we are, one hour, let's put a dotted line here, find that after one hour, I have gone one kilometer. So on this plot, I find that through time, I'm still going the same speed through time, but now I'm also going through space. And so in one hour, I have gone one kilometer and I find myself right here on the graph. And so I keep on driving and another hour later, I look down at my odometer and I find that at that time I have gone two kilometers. So after two hours, I've gone two kilometers. So I went from here to here, to here. Let's keep on going for one more hour. And so after three hours, I find I've gone three kilometers. Now this is a little sloppy, but just assume that I've got these all straight and nice and perfect rectangles and equal rectangles to each other. And so we see that over time, I've gone in one hour, I've gone one kilometer. In two hours, I've gone two kilometers. In three hours, I've gone three kilometers. So every hour, I go one kilometer. So I'm going one kilometer per hour, or one, one kph. That's according to Captain Obvious, of course. And if I draw the graph, it's a nice straight line because I'm going a uniform speed through time, and I'm going a uniform speed through space. So I have measured my position in time and space in the time domain. So when we measure with one of our axes as time, eh, we could make it the vertical axis, but usually we make it the horizontal axis. I am measuring in the time domain. Now let's modify our graph to measure something different as time goes by. I'm going to just clean this up. Oh, let's redraw it. Only take a a few seconds. So there's our vertical axis. Don't know what that is yet, but our horizontal axis will still be time. Let's make that one hour, two hours, three hours, and four hours. And what are we going to measure this time? This time I'm going to measure the position of the minute hand of a clock. So let's draw our clock over here. And our position, well, let's see. If the hand is pointing straight up, we are at zero degrees. If our hand is pointing over here, we are at 90 degrees. 
if our hand is pointing straight down, we're at 180 degrees. And finally, if it's over here, we are at 270 degrees. And after a whole hour, we're going to be back to zero. So let's measure that here. Let's see what we have here. Let's make that 360 degrees or zero. So this is going to be 180, 90, 270. So let's start at zero degrees here. And after how much time is it going to take for that minute hand to turn over 90 degrees and get into this position? Well, if it takes a whole hour to go around once, it's going to take 15 minutes to go that way. So let's go ahead and put some tick marks here. There's 30 minutes, 15 minutes, 45 minutes. So after 15 minutes, my hand is at 90 degrees. So there it is. So now after another 15 minutes, what's going to happen? That hand is going to be pointing straight down to 180 degrees. So 180 and 30 minutes, it's gonna put us right about here. Now, after another 15 minutes, it's going to be pointing to 270 degrees. So there we are at 45 minutes, 270 degrees, right about there. And then finally, after a full hour, it's going to be pointing back up to zero or 360. So I'm going to just draw this zero slash 360. I suppose I could have kept it the other way, but zero or 360. So we've reached this point right here. Now what's going to happen if we continue on? Well, it's going to continue going around the way it was before. Uh, could we wind that around and say, well, now that's going to be 360 plus 90, 450 degrees, but then it's just going to keep going on on and off the graph. But hey, it's cyclic. Why not just return it to zero? So we'll just bring it right back down to here. So we've gone around the clock to 360 degrees or zero, and we're just going to bring it straight back down and start over again. So after 15 minutes, we end up about here. After 30 minutes, about here. 45 minutes, about here. Another hour, we're about there. Up we go, and back down. So each hour, we go all the way around the clock, and then reset all the way around the clock, and then reset again, and so we get this particular shape as we draw the time where we go an equal amount of degrees around the clock face over time. This is going to be 0, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, 1 hour, and it's going to be 90, 180, 270, 360 degrees, and it's just going to repeat over and over again. And this is something we see quite often in alternating current, of course, is repeating shapes. We call this a wave. Now, a wave has two definitions. We usually think of a wave as like on the surface of the ocean, these undulating uh, packets of uh, energy where it trades off between kinetic energy and uh, potential energy as energy goes along the surface. But here is a wave that has nothing to do with that shape, but that's a wavy shape, isn't it? But this, is there a wave happening here? No, we're just plotting the angle 90 degrees, 180, 270, 360, and zero. We're simply plotting an angle in the time domain, and it makes this shape that looks like a wave. And so we call it a wave. In this particular point, we call this a sawtooth wave because it looks like the teeth of a saw. So if we plot the clock going around its face in the time domain in this way where we repeat every time we go around the clock, we end up with a sawtooth wave. Now let's see what happens if we plot the hour hand. Of course, what happens with the hour hand, it's going a lot slower. So in the time plot along the horizontal axis, it's not going to go as quickly as the minute hand. So what's going to happen there? Let's say this goes around one whole hour. So it goes 90, 180, 270, back to zero. In that time, how far is the hour hand going to go? Well, it's only going to go 30 degrees. So let's see, there's 90, it's going to only go about, there's 30, there's 60, there's 90. So the hour hand, let's do this in a, another color so we can watch it. Try not to contaminate my red pen with my black ink. But after an entire hour, the hour hand is only going to go to about there. Let's see if I can draw a straightish line here. Uh, there we go, that's not too bad. So in the time that the minute hand went all the way around the clock, the hour hand only went 30 degrees. 
And then the next hour is going to go to right about there, but another 30 degrees to 60 degrees. And then another hour, it's going to go up to all the way to 90 degrees. So the minute hand goes around three times in the time it takes for the hour hand to just go 90 degrees. So if I redraw that up here, let's draw the hour hand. Uh, let's draw a line to make our graph. So there's our timeline. And our hour hand is going to do something like, if I can draw a fairly straight line here. After 12 hours, it's going to go 360 degrees, where the minute hand is going to go around 12 times. So if I put the minute hand here, it's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, there we go, 12. There, I fudged it. So in the time it takes for the hour hand to go 360 degrees, the minute hand goes around 12 times. So we get these two different sawtooth shapes, but one is stretched out compared to the other, or there's more of the minute shapes than the hour shapes because they're happening more over time. So that's just comparing two different wave shapes that are happening at two different frequencies. How frequent is the minute hand? Well, every hour it goes around. So it's one cycle per hour. The hour hand is going much slower, so it's only one cycle every 12 hours. Now let's see how this relates to alternating current. Let's erase this just to get it out of the way. And we'll draw our graph here again. Once again, time in the horizontal axis and something else in the vertical axis. I'm not going to put some time marks on here yet because I'll put them on there later. So let's take a look at what comes out of the mains or the wall plug or off the power grid, depending on where you are in the world and what you call it. And let's say at, oh, I'm going to put a zero line here. So this is going to be zero volts. And I'm going to use the North American standards here because that's what's in my mind and I don't, I don't want to confuse things by trying to translate them. So we're going to have a voltage coming out of the wall that over a certain period of time is going to reach up to about 170 volts. And then that over another period of time, it's going to drop back down to zero. Sort of looks like what we were doing, except instead of a sawtooth, I get this little, little mound here. And then it's going to continue going down and eventually reach negative 170 volts and climb back up to zero. So there is a full cycle. Instead of repeating like the sawtooth did, it's going down to some negative voltage. It's not ending at the same place. I could relate it to this, but I'm just going to leave it as it is for now. So let's just look at this wave the way it is. But once again, we get a full cycle from here to here. Well, in the case of the clock, we were measuring that in, well, in reality, we would measure that in uh, hours, you know, one hour, two hours, three hours, or all the way around will be 60 minutes for the minute hand. But in the case of alternating current, why don't we use the same kind of thing? I mean, we're doing something cyclic. In the case of the clock, we went around 360 degrees. Why not do the same thing with our power? One complete cycle, let's call that 360 degrees. So this is going to be, as far as degree wise, I'm going to mark that up here. 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270, and 360. Nice, easy, convenient way to do that. So after 90 degrees, we peak at 170 volts. Another 90 degrees at 180 degrees, we're down to zero. We go down another 90 degrees to 270, and we're at minus 170 volts. And then another 90 degrees, we're at 360 or zero degrees, and we're back to zero volts again. And we've done one complete cycle. And this just goes over and over again, so it makes sense. Well, we can measure that in something else, but it cycles. Why not measure it in degrees? And that's exactly what we do. So this wave goes 360 degrees. Well, in America, because our frequency is 60 times per second, so this happens 60 times 
every second. After 60 of those, one second has gone by, and so this becomes 16.6 .6 milliseconds. And most of the world where this frequency is 50 times per second, that would be 20 milliseconds, but I don't want to keep trying to translate because that'll mess up my mind. So 16.6 .6 milliseconds to do that one complete cycle. So that's how we measure along the time domain of voltage in alternating current. And this is our typical wave shape, which we call a sine wave. We call it that because we can predict what voltage we have at a particular time by a trigonometric function called the sine. And so if we take our time and our starting voltage and the sine function, we can actually predict that our voltage will be some particular voltage at any particular time along this wave. So it follows that sine function, making this particular shape that I've kind of mangled here, but you can only draw it so well. So in the case of what we have here in North America, this would be after 4.15 milliseconds, 8.3 milliseconds, and the full cycle would be 16.6 .6 milliseconds. So every 16.6 .6 milliseconds, we do one cycle, go all the way 360 degrees around our circle, if you will, and then we do the whole thing 60 times every second. And we have a device that measures this. It's called a time domain voltimeter. And we have a device that measures this and draw, and we have a device that measures this. And we have a device that actually draws this on a screen as we measure voltage. It measures our voltage compared to time. And if we put a sine wave on there, we would get this shape. That device is called a time domain voltimeter and you've never heard it called that before. That would be a fancy name for it if we wanted to call it by a fancy name, but we just know it as a oscilloscope. So it measures voltage in the time domain. So remember that the oscilloscope measures in the time domain. It measures how voltage changes over time. Now, before I move on, I just have to clarify one thing. I'm, so this goes up to 170 volts down to minus 170 volts. I thought that the voltage in North America was 120 volts. Well, that is actually not exactly an average, but if we take all the voltages over time and do some mathematical to them called root mean square, I'll describe this at a later time when I talk about how we measure voltage, but we do this mathematic to it, we find that this wave carries the same energy as about 120 volts DC. So even though our voltage goes up to 170 down to minus 170, we call it 120 because of the energy content. It's not exactly an average. It's called root mean square. Talk about that down the road, but I just don't want to leave you hanging about what, what's these voltages here? I'd never heard of that. Well, that's what's really going on. Put an oscilloscope or a time domain voltimeter on your wall plug in North America, and this is what you will see. And then you put a voltmeter on there and the voltmeter will say, oh yeah, that's 120 volts. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible, and a big thank you to everyone for watching.